my Gavan and Melonine, and well met indeed. I'm Arakia Gala Durathan, head of the modding team behind Divide and Conquer. And oh, I've moved the microphone, it might be loud. Welcome back to Darwinian as we continue on in our preparation and build up to absolutely side swiping Dale out of the game. They will not be ready for it, they will not be expecting it, and when it happens, it'll be delightful. But until that time, we must finish off the runic upstarts. For that is all they are to us. Scum. We are besieging Theoton. We are besieging Othelbed. We have got everywhere from the Ered Lithui all the way to the very bowels of Mirkwood itself. Darwinian is reigning supreme. And the men and women of Rune can do nothing about it. Granted, largely this is in part due to the... Supreme yes, support of Avalyn, but it isn't solely based on Avalyn's um, support. I think Avalyn and the troops he gave may have won us one or two key battles, but Avalyn has had nothing to do with our successes in the West. That army was being trained by ourselves. So he's helped, but I don't think we were always going to beat Rune. And because if we weren't going to beat Rune, we would lose the campaign. It's, it's do or die as Darwinian. Let's do or die as many of them, to be honest. But of course, Darwinian and Rune are in a, a, a fascinating little bubble where they, it's just one versus the other and, and off they go. Although I say that, Dale and, and the dwarves are, are absolutely assisting and, and crushing Rune on the northern side of the sea of their namesake. And uh, the so we are gaining support. Us. But, uh, besieged. It's mostly been us. <laughs> Awful bad. Captain Kushan, Captain Avsar, and Captain Leaf. Lif, Leaf, I'm going to go with Leaf. Leaf has four units that are actually sizable and four that were on their way to be retrained. Captain Kushan brings, oh, a similar situation. Nothing but garbage. And same with Avsar. Why they've just attacked us it shows their desperation. We shall fight the battle in an attempt to keep our four good enemy. units alive so we can get them back and retrain. Although the elves, actually, we could do with the elves dying. It's heartless and pitiless, I know, but the elves cannot be retrained. They are nothing to us. Um, so maybe we stick those out the front. <laughs> Offer them up as sacrifice. Oh no, it's all out of sync. That's so annoying. Uh, seven. We want F7. There we are. Righty ho ho. Um, you, you, and you. Welcome to the front lines. Oh, shift of. Yeah, off you go. You stay back. And then the archers go behind. I'm ready. The enemy have brought up I suppose. Our enemy comes at us from all sides. But do we waver? Do we buggery? To war then. It must be so soul-destroying and crushing if we were to just flip the camera around for a moment and follow these men wearily trudging off to war at the behest of a general, a faction leader who they have maybe never even seen. They may not even know his name. He sits comfortably, far, far, far away in the castle of Rubar. I think, anyway. He's either in Rubar or he's in Cannes. Their people, well, to be honest, actually, no. Most of their women and children are alive and well. We've been quite generous in our conquest uh, of the runic heartlands. And it's only these stubborn few who continue to resist, were they, but to simply join with us and merge into our thorn battalions, they would see that life under the Vintner court is not something to be feared. We are a generous people. I really like this unit. It looks so good. It's the perfect example of simplicity but tinged with quality. I mean, this game is old, but just have a look at that gentleman's pauldron. The quality and the detail on that piece of armour is fantastic. And No, don't move. You're ruining my point. <laughs> don't look at the horse, though, of course, because the horses have always been such a horrible sore spot on the... Uh, on the quality arm that is this game. But even his helmet, it just looks so good. It's such a good looking unit. I've always really liked that. Anyway, he's off to charge into us, so stand your ground. I, I'm ready, I suppose. He's going for our weakest unit, but we've got spears. Be ready, men. Oh, that man fell over before it even hit him. He's not dead, at least. 
He's broken his leg by the looks of things. He's getting attacked by his own comrade. He keeps hitting him in the back. He finally decides he's actually going to face the enemy. Now he's got a hole in his like neck this, now and everything. Smash the enemy. He's holding off rather to be well with his... Oh! Lethal! Murderer standing before us. This gentleman. Sign him up as the captain. That was fantastic. He's blocking again now. No one's going to stop him. A man of this repute. We must give him a name. We've used so many names. We're running out of a of the pool of basic names. But look at him standing strong. A resolute, a beacon of the strength of Darwinian as these fools fly. What is actually happening in the battle though? We should probably pay some attention. Well, I mean, why win this one with our eyes closed? We have pretty much done that. Only let's half the enemy force remains. Oh, have I just told you to run away? No, I ungrouped you. Good. Right, run over there. Right, let's get him in. We need to give him a name. Oh, I can't even remember which one he is. Ah, there he is, the bloodstained friend. Bloodstained, there we go, he's just won an epithet. Ah, oh, this is... Such RPG-like qualities this game possesses. Harold. I'm feeling Harold. Harold? Should we go with Harold? Here he is, Harold the Bloodstained. A simple man from the heartlands of Darwinian, tending the vine, gathering fruit, sustenance, and security for his family. And now he's here, called to honor on the plains of wherever we are, Offalbed. Right, that enemy has fled, so let's turn our attention and let's get Harold the Bloodied into the fray. Oh, we've lost him now. There's quite a few people who were bloodied, but Harold had a very distinct hair color, didn't he? In, in accompaniment to his bloodied state. I feel it's this fellow just here. I could be wrong, and this could be Paul, the not-so-bloodied. Oh, maybe one of these ones is Harold. Oh, didn't he have any of his right shoulder? Oh, I don't know. Harold, whoever you are, put your hand up. Oh, hello. Just bumped into the enemy. Harold, you're called! Oh, goodness. I've no idea which one's Harold now. Let's let's go with this fellow over here that has the blood set. Oh, there's two of them. They're identical. Oh, no. Harold's story has come to an end, but let us remember him well. Only half the enemy force remains. As a, a shining example of what a, a man of Darwinian should be. How many people have we actually lost? 20%. That's not really acceptable, is it? Behold how our cowardly foe runs. Come on, it's over now, it's isn't time it? To... This is a clear 132 victory. we lost, sadly. Vineyard levies only took 37, but Harold, one of those 37 was definitely Harold. Cut and thrust of melee is not lost on him. I've always very much liked that image because it's cool to see the Oliphants not as beasts of war, because they're not naturally um, aggressive. They are quite docile creatures to all extents. Oh, blimey. <laughs> I was saying their faction leader was miles away. He's around the corner. Where on earth did that army come from? Borlach. Oh, he's not their leader. But that's a massive army. There's absolutely no way we're winning that. Oh, no. You're all going to die, I'm afraid. Yes, Every single one of you. Harold's story really has come to an end because he's about to get massacred. <laughs> I'm not going to fight that. Uh, that would be an we absolute waste of time. Some of the number survived. We can only hope Harold was one of them. But now we really need, do need to get some troops over here sharpish because that army's come out of nowhere. Avalyn is on his way to the west, so perhaps he can take up defence of our southern border there. I'm just so looking forward to attacking Dale. I want to see the purple colours of banners of Darwinian rain on the field. Oh, yeah, go on. Thank you. Oh, Minas Tirith is under attack. Oh, why is there a second person Lord, in here? My Lord. Uh, we didn't take Theoton in time. We should have attacked it. That's why, because Thane has come of age. And Thane, who are you? Where do you belong? Let's have a look at your image. There you are. You are 16 years of age, and you are a blood son of Vine Regent Howen, the brother-in-law of Legend of Total War. You are destined for great things, I'm sure. And those great things begin in Santanwe. So on your way. Yes, my lord. There's Avalyn. 
I can't. I don't think we can afford to go for Austin Avari at the moment. We've got to push through to Othelbed because that army could take every single town we have in Ravanian, and it won't. They won't. Uh, it won't challenge them in the slightest. Your orders, my lord. And we've got our best general. Is is, is swanning around over there building towers. Dear, oh dear. Yes, my lord. What's Logarth got? Logarth has got some troops, actually. Oh, and he can get another one as well. Yeah, go on. Will, right, you guys make your way to Santanwi as well. Edwardin, no, no. you do too. Lord. Ignore the towers for now. Yes. We'll worry. If Dogledore come, Dogledore come. We'll have much bigger fish to fry if they attack us act properly. They actually come from us. And our second best general is also swanning around on the borders of nowhere doing nothing other than building towers. Your orders, my lord. Avalyn. Do all the oh god, there's more of them. Captain Kaljar. Yeah, we can't afford that army to be running around. We shall have to dispatch them. How many archers have they got? None. No archers. Fascinating. Muster your courage, very well. Men. We march into battle. Very well, very well. Um, something I was going to say uh, about the Dol Amroth faction overview. Many people have mentioned that it says princesses are trainable out of the tier 2 merchant guild. And that is because the merchants weren't actually finished at the time I recorded that um, Dol Amroth video. But about three hours after I finished it, they were recorded. Uh, they were um, implemented properly. And for some reason, I've really not worked out why. For some reason, the Third Age Total War team changed merchants to be princesses, but to have the same role as merchants. So they would go and stand on resources and get you money, but they'd be called princesses and they'd look like princesses and they'd have female names. But they would actually be merchants and I'm not sure why they thought, hey, we want merchants, but actually we don't want them to be merchants. We'd rather they were ladies. I'm not sure why. Uh, I've been racking my brains, but I can't put my finger on their decision there. So no, we'll just have to remain in a mystery. Right, um, what are we actually doing? We attacked them, didn't we? So we are... All of this doesn't matter. We're just going to move everyone up this hill here in front of us. Because our enemy will do the same. I was about to lay the stakes then as well. That would have been a waste of time. I can't imagine that they will sit... That they will come for us. I just don't think they will. They, uh, they will definitely sit on top of their little hill and wait us out. But something that we can do, Avalyn, if you come around here and try and take out their cavalry while well, we've got the chance. Speaking of, of look good looking unit models, I just noticed that Avalyn's unit has exactly the same model as the oh, unit I was just gushing over. But they're fantastic little archers. This unit, in fact, here we are. Brother against brother. One's an elf, one's from Cand. Oh dear, the arrows fly in there, don't they? Now oh, you got there quick. Oh, of course, they walk faster than everyone else, don't they? A bizarre little quirk of pikemen is <laughs> their ridiculous speed. I, I'd forgotten about that. Alright, we're going up there now, please. Because the AI is very, very foolish. It understands the importance of hills, and then as soon as you just start to walk towards it, it then thinks, I do like being on the hill, but I'd rather be a defender. And so if being a defender means I can no longer have the hill, so be it. And then they just bugger off, because you kind of muscle them out by just walking towards them. It's so easy to cheese this game's AI, that's the point I'm making. But you'd be foolish not to sometimes. We want to win this battle with as minimum casualties as possible, so that we can take on... The army that slayed Harold the Great, Harold the Bloodied, Harold the Saviour of Darwinian. We cannot allow his death to go unanswered. Oh, I've done something there. I just made them run and they're not a unit that was even running. Right, let's turn and face, please. You fellows, you're not really in the right line, so just go like that. Pikes, you are. So if you could take that flank. Archer units, if you just turn on the, essentially turn on the spot. Javelins, come and fill that little gap there. You're free to fire at will. Everyone is welcome and able and willing to run. So if you would all do that. And the archers, have you still got the horses? You haven't killed as many of them as I, as I would have liked to be 
perfectly honest. Ah, the great banner of Darwinian flies high. I'm not normally one for banners that have an actual image on them, but there was something about the Darwinian one that I thought was just it worked worked rather well and was rather fitting. So I I I, I agreed when Matt suggested it. How many of them now? 32. Keep up the fire. Archers back here are now opening fire. They've got some javelin, remember? They're not going to do out. Our javelins fly high and are wasted against Balkov. Spearmen, tribesmen, clansmen. Which one is it? Oh, yes. Please, please, please. Spears down. Please do go against perhaps the game's greatest pike unit. I would welcome it. Right, uh, you've got some Daratai warriors coming for you, so hold your ground. We're not on the hill, which is a shame. It is a real shame. But if you guys just go for these Balkov while if they're just walking like backwards this, and forwards, backwards we will and forwards. Smash the enemy. And once you've run out of arrows, then I'll let you charge into this unit. But you feel free to run away for the time being, as necessary. I really like the name Avalyn. There's something about it that I quite like. There's something quite easy in writing fantasy <laughs> tropes, or a, a, a fantasy trope, I should say. Something that makes it easy to make in fantasy names. Is merely sticking apostrophes in the middle of names. It's so alien to us on planet Earth. Um, especially in, obviously in English, apostrophes are not a feature of names. But um, stick them into the middle of a name and boom, you've suddenly got an elven king or um, some mystery. The enemy are bad right, we're ready, ready to charge. They have lost half their men. Our pikemen have lost a single man, which means things are getting dicey, so we should get in there. Our elven cavalry charges. Oh, and the field runs red with the blood of runic clans. Or rather, they all fall over in a very nice and pleasing design. <laughs> right, Avalyn, get your keen elven swords in amongst the mix there, please. Ah, they're out. It's over. Where's their general? Who is their general? What is their general? That's probably a better question. I'm sure it was the cavalry. It's always the cavalry. Perhaps not in this instance. The Daratai warriors are fighting on better. We've lost two Moroquendi protectors. That's not acceptable. This unit looks so much better than it did when you the first game. If anyone still has the older versions of Dividing Conquer, load up anything pre-version 3 and have a look at the old um, Avari protectors or whatever they were called. Avari pikes, possibly. And uh, come back and have a look at them now. They just look so much better. Anyway, enough of this. I have stone and iron to use for Angmar. I know he didn't just say that, but every time he says "Hi, Baladins," it sounds like he's saying "I." The enemy army flees the field. Pursue and run them down. Get a few more with their archers, but don't kill any of our own. Look at their range. Elves' range is ridiculous. They don't even know where the enemy is. They're just firing and they know they're going to get kills. That's so ballsy. Two more percent of the enemy died. 47. 1,125. Oh, and Avalyn, you taking 239 down yourself. Well done, sir. Well done indeed. 198 follow-up Moriquendi protectors, which you will be no, not surprised at all, because they only lost two people. And just took out a storm. That is, of course, the town known as Lake Town burning in Smaug's fury and vengeance. I would could think of nothing worse than living on a town on stilts on a lake. Imagine when it's windy. Uh, the, you just could not escape the water. There would be water everywhere. Everything would be wet and damp and the smell... No! The smell would be horrendous. I mean, this isn't nowadays. <laughs> this is based on like medieval society. A town on a lake whose sole and primary, or not sole, but primary means of sustenance and trade is fish would be the most disgusting place to live. I just couldn't. 
your I can't even idol. imagine. My brain cannot imagine the stench and the disgustingness. Granted, I don't like fish, so I'm a little biased. And I absolutely hate the sea, which is a bit of a, a, a kick in the face to my family, to be honest, because I come from a um, historically naval family. Uh, my father was in the Navy, and my great-grandfather served in um, World War II on Her Majesty's ship War Spite, my Lord. which I have Orders. the plaque of now in my house, actually. My Lord. A plaque from the officer's mess of the ship. My great-grandfather, I can't recall the reason why, but he was given it. And it passed down the line, and now it's mine. And yes, it looks no very more. cool. <laughs> what are we actually doing other than talking about uh, Lord, ships? We are about to end the turn and hope that that army takes pity on us, because we do not have the stones. Well, we've got the stones, of course, we're Darwinian. But we don't, perhaps, have the support behind those stones. Ah, oh, no, of course, that's where their faction leader is. Cowering like a little cowardly yes, coward on the Isle of Nabur. I think we've got enough to take him. Let's just As go for come it. On. We've got one round. That'll do, right? Yes. Come at me, sire. We In we go. Ah, there's Gimli with a notch in his axe. After the Battle of Helm's Deep. Welcome to the small and gentle Isle of Nibur, and the sole town therein, Theoden, named of course for the valour and great deeds of Thea someone, um, whose name we absolutely have not forgotten, of course that would be such a grave disservice to his honour and his memory, but we may actually in truth have forgotten his name. Uh, don't send that one in actually, because they'll only get killed by arrow fire. Send in whoever our general here today is. Archers fire at will and when ready. Fire at will, Commander. I haven't seen the latest Star Wars film, but uh, when I heard that they'd brought uh, Palpatine back as more than just a little cameo or, or, or like a force projection or even just a recording or something, I, was, I just couldn't have I rolled my eyes and thought, oh, I won't bother with that one then. I'm not a die-hard Star Wars fan or anything, but I mean, when you run out of storytelling ideas, so you just resurrect the baddie. Again, then I mean, come on, pull something at least a little better out of your hat. You've had years to write it. But there we are. I, I shan't turn this into a rant against Star Wars. It just seemed lazy, you know. It just seemed lazy. Right, the enemy has pulled away from the gate, and they're down this annoying little slip road. The battering ram is in place, uh, which is going to be a pain because the best way we're going to the our best chance of winning here today is to use as many of our bolts and bows, bolts and bows. My brain just goes off on these little tracks, you know. And once you're on the track, you just can't come off of it, even if it's the wrong track. Done well. The gates have fallen. Once it's, once you get going, there's no turning back. I don't think we're going to get many chances to the shoot the walls. enemy because as soon as we start shooting them they're going to run at us almost certainly because the AI loves doing that hold on we lost them they're buggering off over there what are you doing what are you actually doing why are you running over there <laughs> right tell you what knights new plan you go down there and you go down there and if the entire army here is actually expendable, I don't know why I'm being so precious about it. All right, let's go. The only thing I don't want to do is lose our Rohan general, because he's unique here. But what we do want to do is catch the enemy in ideally a two-way melee. Yes, just like that. And then... Get our archers to just come and start like this, shooting at them. We will smash the enemy. Come on, archer people. Let's get moving. Let's get moving. Oh, they did kill one. Oh, wow. You never see arcing shots do anything. That's fantastic. I beg you, please clear a path to the enemy lines. We are about to rain hell down upon them. That man there, who we shall call Baldrick, because of what's about to happen, is almost certainly going to die to a crossbow bolt in the back. Oh, no, no, he's had his, his skull's been cracked open, and now desperately he tries to stop as the 
this fellow with the boss eye just absolutely whacked away at the ground. The crossbows are keeping the fire up. But we will lose a lot of these two. But I mean, it doesn't make any difference. We're making money now. Once we take Theaton back as well, we shall see a huge upsurge in our money because it's a trade hub. And I can absolutely see the reason why people say we shouldn't include it in the game because it makes so much money and it is only ever owned by Rune or Dorwinian. And it seems very much that the one that has it gets a significant financial boost. If we continue like this, we will smash the enemy. Right, the bladesmen are out of the way. So now you have total impunity. They have lost half their men. Oh yes, we're doing very well. We're killing a lot of our own there, but that's not a problem now. Our men have taken control of Of course, the city. don't tell them I said that. The men don't take too kindly when they learn that they are purely arrow fun. Eight. Come on. Oh sorry, I'm watching from miles. <laughs> it must be so boring to watch me. I don't know why all of you do. I constantly forget to move in and show you the actual action, which is infinitely more interesting than hovering over the crossbows as 50% of them fire at the enemy. Ah, the general's gone off on a jolly. He's going for it. Let's get rid of those. They're ruining our cinematics. Oh, both of them fall like firing squad lines. Down they go, and one stands remaining. Please don't tell me you're firing now. Stop what you're doing. The battle is very much in our favour. Victory will be ours. Fifty gold coins to the man that brings me the plumes on his head. We're going to need some more expertise, I think. Bladesman, you are not up to this task. The High Paladins are. Swords out. Oh, he's killed a man in the back while he ran away. Here they come. They've made their way in. The Bladesmen are holding on to him, but now they're moving off. These two Bladesmen are like, no! I want that gold! Oh, Dan. Dan's gone down. Brave and foolhardy Dan. Phil's realised the error in the ways and he's buggering off. And now it's left to the High Paladins. Any one of them could kill this fellow in seconds if they just tried. But at the moment they're just teasing him. Oh, you let one of them kill you. <laughs> Idiots. But they're dancing, these two. Swirling in unison. Anyway, should we actually bring him down now, please? This Thank is you. a clear victory. 243 people. <laughs> Lokan Marwan falls. High Paladins took one, being him. The Vineyard Bowman did get one kill. That's fantastic. And the Crosswomen took 63 of the enemy down. The Levies killed two. <laughs> they are so atrociously bad when put into situations like that. That is a very cool image of Minas Tirith, I think, because it actually breathes some life into the city, you know? It makes you think that things actually happen. Minas Tirith in the films does look fantastic, but you, I always got the sense that it was very much a model or, or a film set. You know, it didn't feel alive. Every building was whitewashed and almost identical. Like, where was the lines of clothing hanging outside? And where are the baskets in the street? I know there's that famous Menor, shot of Gandalf sitting in the street just conquered. after Faramir is, is, as far as they're concerned, dead and killed. Spoiler alert. Um, and there's a shot of Gandalf sitting in a little street and there's a bell tolling and there's a rooster cook... Uh, um, what do roosters do? Calling? Crowing? <laughs> I don't know. What does a rooster do? Someone will know. C cl they don't cluck, do they? Uh, well, what? There's definitely a word for what a rooster does. Anyway, and Gandalf's sitting in a street and there's some baskets and things around him and it looks a little bit like that street is lived in. But on the whole, as they ride through and around Minas Tirith, you get the sense that it is very much not a lived in location. Ah, uh, Leaf, you head back as well. As you wish, my lord. Right, I think that's going to do us. Um, my lord. I am going to head off and enjoy the rest of my evening. This one was recorded on a Monday, if you're interested. So it's yes, two Monday. days since I recorded this. We shall continue oh, future Gallo, I do hope your Wednesday is going well. And for all of you listening, I do hope your days are going well. I'll tell you what, let's have a look at the world, actually. We haven't done that for a while, have we? 
Toggle Fog of War. Do you want to go and see what Dol Amroth used to look like before I cut a hole in the middle of the mountains? Because map editing is something that I do. I'm not just a writer, thank you very much. Um, there used to be mountains here. They're right. Look, you're looking at them. There are the mountains. But of course, in that overview, you may have seen that now there's a road that goes through there. And you'll also will have seen that this top bit of the river is no longer grey compared to the blue beneath it. Uh, they are the same colour. One of those minor little features. I also do scripting if you're interested. Erid Lewin script, for example, whilst greatly assisted and helped by um, one of our main beta testers, Lord... No, not Lord of Lynx. And am I mixing two names there? Or is it just Lynx? Oh, I'm terribly sorry. I've gone off on this and totally forgotten your name. No, I'm sure it's Lord of Lynx. Anyway, I, do, I don't mean any offence. I'm just oh, absolutely awful at remembering all of the various internet monikers. But anyway, the Arid Lewin script is mine. So uh, that's something I did as well. So I hope you enjoy that. Uh, you see these see these mounds around Michael Delving or Mitchell Delving, sorry. I made those. I did those. That was that was me. Gundabad, as a nation, as an actual faction. That was me. You're welcome. Feel free to write your praise. Say thanks, Gally, for making Gundabad. I was really pleased with that. I really enjoy playing as them. Anyway, enough about me. What is actually happening in the world? Well, Dol Amroth and the Ardenaim are butting heads rather nicely around Tirithoros. They're holding the mouths of the Anduin, but the Ardenaim keep just walking up. And then thinking, well, no, better, we, we better not go, actually. We haven't been given permission. Harad and Kand fighting around... Ah, oh, the Witch King of Angmar stands right down in Harad. And why is he so far away? But he's going off on the invasion, wherever the invasion is. Isn't it Thrand Thranduil's halls? Yes. And Dale have come to support. Oh, you never see that. It's very rare that allies actually get involved. In fact, it would appear that all of the... Uh, um, Nazgul are off on their way. This fellow is now called, um, he's not called Akora Hill, the blind sorcerer anymore. He's called Aglarakor the sycophant. Uh, Chieftain Huamarath the fearless is now called, I believe, Shivus the desert sands. Um, it doesn't actually matter which name replaced which, but I think that one may have happened. So Gundabad are doing alright. The dwarves are focusing entirely on Gundabad. They have no action in the east at all except for diplomats. Dale has carved themselves a nice little swath of land in the center there they will put up more of a fight than people expect but when all the talk of the fog of war is turned off i actually look like i'm doing incredibly well when in truth we're not doing that well um mordor are doing well however and as we've already heard are right up against minas tirith they've crossed the ramas echor and the pelinor burns the towers are at the gates but the southern gate has not fallen and the fiefs are answering the call Derefin coming up there, but Kalanhad has fallen, so a northern Anorian is down. Uh, Rohan are about to die. Jesus, didn't realize how badly they're doing. Entwade and Aldberg in the fold are all that's left. Entwade surely to fall shortly, but Diorbrand the Fearless resides over the downfall of Rohan. What a sorry state of affairs for them. Lothlorien doing all right, nothing really happening there. Khazadum are down to Erui. Moria is actually doing incredibly well and are now going for Imladris of all things. And that is really bizarre. It makes it look like that elf is holding the orc banner, doesn't it? A traitor in their midst. <laughs> um, what else have we got? Dunn and are basically dead. That's quite interesting. What are we? 73 turns in. Enidwyth absolutely wrecking them. Well done, sirs. Well done indeed. Bree doing rather well, though. They've got um, Minhiriath and Erun Vaughan. So they'll be holding Enidwyth off if they are indeed at war, or are they allies? Oh, look, Enidwyth has upgraded Dol Vorn, and Bree have now taken it, so which would assume that they are at war, because that is an Enidwyth specific, or Enidwyth and Dunland town, not a Bree town. Bree's towns have red roofing and brown walls. There we are, that's a Bree town. I can't get the camera in the middle. There we go. Uh, and the Northern Dune and I are not really doing out, but Angmar are slowly losing out because of this. This is a perfect example of why invasions are an absolutely useless and terrible idea in this game. Angmar are right up against it. The Northern Dune and I have not lost any of their chief provinces and are fighting back rather well. Angmar is losing ground in the west to the dwarves of Ered Lewin, who have managed to take Fuerost. And in their time of utmost need, when the world is turning against them, the peoples of Angmar feel the need to send 4,000 roughly, possibly even more, of their frontline forces. They're going to send them all the way across the Misty Mountains into the heart of Mirkwood itself because Sauron commands them to die in order that Thranduil's Halls falls. 
So Angmar is absolutely going to nerf itself. They are aided slightly because Moria is doing well, which gives them a bit of a boost. That is helping them. But it will not be long. Angmar do not outclass the dwarves. They need to throw everything they can at the dwarves in order to beat them. And they are sending so many troops away on an invasion. It's stupid. But otherwise... That is going to end the episode. Enough of me just ranting and shouting at the microphone. Let us go about our business and be on our way. So thank you for watching. And until we speak again, dear friends, let me start that again. Until we speak again, do have a smashing day. And I do hope that all is well with you and yours. And um, and farewell.